But I'm standing in the ocean, um, knee deep in the water, and I'm looking towards the, the islands and stuff, and um, the skyline was extremely beautiful, and then all of a sudden, it just was black, like so black and dark that it was just like thick. Um, you could just feel the darkness. And this is where it gets pretty eerie because of what's going on and what's about to happen with the uh, solar eclipse thing. Um, all of a sudden the sky, even though it was black, had these like dark purple and reddish orange and it was like, as I'm looking, it's panoramic. So I'm scrolling across the sky, looking like this at the sky. And it just is black, black, black. And then it's like, I can see symbols in the sky, but it's all, it's the moon. And there was like several moons. And then it was like transitioning from like crescent and then into hole. And then like, it was doing that. And I could see several like giant. God bless you, Channel family, and welcome back to Cloud9 Blessings. I truly hope that you are all having a very beautiful and blessed week in the Lord. I am sure many of you are excited to see the eclipse that is going to take place today through the United States. Now, I unfortunately, where I live, will not be able to see the eclipse, but I'm looking forward to seeing what it is going to look like online and please comment in the comments box if you are able to see the eclipse as well where you live. Um, in this video today, we are going to be looking at an end time experience that was emailed in by our dear brother in Christ, Matthew. Now, he did mention about this experience having something to do with the eclipse. So I'm really interested to see what he has seen. So brothers and sisters, let's now take a look. brothers and sisters alike, as well as anyone that's not even, uh, I don't even know where to start. I'm, I'm, I just woke up from uh, a nap and uh, I've been having questions because three days ago um, I had an incredible dream. I, I even mentioned in one of my last videos and my, my testimony that I had questions about the rapture and if it was actually a doctrine that God wants us to know or if it was created by man and, and why we were div divisive on it. Um, this isn't an actual answer, but I mean, maybe it is, but I, I have to share the dream. I wasn't going to at first. Um, this is actually, I, I had the dream three days ago, but I just woke up from another dream it's so crazy because this time the dream wasn't in relation to it, but it it's thunder and lightning and storming extremely bad here. And uh, I always talk to God when that happens. I'm like, oh, God, I get excited. And my cats are freaking out because it's pretty heavy. It's like way lightning and thundering. and um, but I just started talking to God. Oh, God, is that you coming back tonight? You know, I'm getting all excited. And um, I actually, before I had this, uh, went laid down today, I watched that um, uh, movie about Abraham. I didn't even know it had come out last year. And it's uh, My Only Son. <laughs> um, and I was just praising God about it and because it was so beautiful, you know, remembering the story of Abraham and all of his descendants and that's all, all of us and and I was just praising God for his promises and before I laid down for the nap I even said to God you know because um, I didn't understand the, the dream it was so vivid and incredible yet scary <laughs> and I didn't really fully understand it and I wanted some uh, clarification I was like Lord uh, I know you're not an author of confusion but I don't really know what that meant, and um, I'll tell you what, the Lord's really been working with me lately and working on me, because uh, the dream was so vivid and so colorful and so symbolic, and um, oh, it sends chills down my spine, but um, 
I'll just start off with the dream that I had three days ago and then explain to you what I saw and then the revelation I received actually from just an algorithm as I opened the YouTube and um, I saw a man um, that was talking about his rapture dream that he had two years ago and uh, <laughs> he said almost the same thing that I had just seen and it again like same thing when I saw uh, Cariana and I gasped I did the same thing like lately just things have been happening that are so powerful uh, the Lord's moving and maybe he is coming back really soon so um, I don't know do you guys do the, does the body are you guys in agreement with me do you feel that groaning in the spirit but not in a bad way but like something is happening do you just feel it stirring up in you <clears throat> So, yeah, sorry if I look all tired and just woke up, because I did, and um, not that I don't look in disarray in every <laughs> Okay, I'll get to it. I'm sorry. I, like I said, I just woke up, kind of foggy, but yet I'm excited, and I, I knew I needed to record this now. So, um, like I said, three days ago, I had a really, really prophetic dream. I'll start off. I was out in, like, the ocean. But it wasn't very deep, and it was beautiful. The skies were pure and clear, and it's like I could see islands in front of me. Um, so I wasn't that far off. I was only about knee deep in the water, but I was still probably about you know, 30, 40 yards from the actual beach. And it looked like an island, kind of, with sandy. I could see the sandy shores and then the grass. And um, The transition in this dream is, is strange to me because... I don't remember everything, but I'm going to try and chronologically say it the way I saw it and what I remember. Uh, the parts that I do remember are extremely clear. Uh, and maybe it happened like this um, because maybe the emphasis of me seeing the clear skies I'm just thinking of and everything and then the drastic change, and it just happened so fast. So I'm sitting there and I see the beautiful skies. It's I can see, you know, behind me oceans as far as the, I can see. It says that oceans represent people in the Bible, so I'm just recovering the revelation of all the stuff as I'm saying it. But I'm standing in the ocean, um, knee deep in the water, and I'm looking towards the the islands and stuff. And um, the skyline was extremely beautiful, and then all of a sudden, it just was black, like so black and dark that. It, it was just like thick um, you could just feel the darkness and this is where it gets pretty eerie because of what's going on and what's about to happen with the uh, solar eclipse thing um, all of a sudden the sky even though it was black had these like dark purple and reddish orange and it was like as I'm looking it's panoramic so I'm scrolling across the sky looking like this at the sky and it just is black 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 and then it's like I can see symbols in the sky but it's all it's the moon and there was like several moons and then it was like transitioning from like crescent and then into hole and then like it was doing that and I could see several like giant um, uh, stellar objects like stars and um, the moon and it was like there was blood red moon and and then the eclipse and then it was like super dark and black and I could just sense impending doom just I could sense just like and I could sense people all around me but I didn't see anybody really and um, it, this dream really troubled me so like as I'm seeing all of that all of a sudden, like, as the panoramic view, and I see the moons and all that, and it's changing. <laughs> the throne room of God opens up. It's like the sky split open, and in between, after all the symbols of the moon and everything in the sky, and the blackness, and all the different colors, but with blackness as the backdrop completely behind it, um, the throne room opens up. And it's almost like I could, they were having a banquet, like a giant meal with a, a huge long table in the center. But Jesus was right there in front, in the middle. And like to the left and the right, 
I, I, I think I saw the, the kingdom of God and like, it was almost like the way John describes the, the 24 elders and, um, but I could see all kinds of heavenly host beings, but my focus was on Jesus because just like in the one dream I told you about where he was huge in the sky, this time I could see his face and his beard and everything and he was huge in the sky but this sentence chills down my spine and it scared me so bad and I think we have a reason to be scared because it says fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding but he had it was either his hand but in my dream I pictured it was like you know how he says he has a rod in his right hand well he had this rod but it was like that finger thing on the end of a stick if y'all ever seen that but it was a gold hand but it was pointing and it was huge and he points it out at me but it was like towards everybody and it wasn't I don't yeah and he pointed that huge finger and he was it was almost like extension of his arm like he was pointing but to me he was holding a rod that had the golden finger on the end of it finger or hand that was pointing like this but it was pointing like that right at me and out of the sky and uh, right about the same time that he did that I was like grabbing onto this balloon string and I started going up straight up as I was holding the balloon string but I could feel like evil entities below me were so mad that I was grabbing onto that string and they were trying to shoot my balloon down and I remember at first I was kind of scared but then I had no fear it was like I knew the Lord was going to I don't know just I had this sense of peace as I'm holding the string and I remember I was being sucked up but I went into the side of this building and just like went up and I was in a vent and it's like in the vent of the side of the building as I can explain and instantly I was in this room and it was all white and everybody in there was wearing white and I remember looking down like at myself it was like if I was playing a video game first person and I looked down and I've got a manila folder in my right hand and it's thick it's like this thick and um, there's all, all these people there and they're all in white and I remember I was at the back of the room and they were already sitting down and uh, I just felt like camaraderie with them already I felt like my brothers and sisters and I instantly was calling them over I was like hey come look at this and I had the folder in my hand and I'm opening it up and at first this uh, I didn't know what this meant but after I saw this man's vision I, I believe I know now and I think it's a word for everybody including myself and uh, it was scary y'all um, but so I have this folder in my hand and I'm calling them over I was like what what a look and I thought at first it was all because I, I told y'all about me being an artist and it was all these sketches but they looked like rough in my they were all in black and white every single one I told you this folder folder was like this thick I open the middle of the folder and I'm looking through and I see all these sketches and I'm trying to find certain ones that I was trying to show them. I was like, hey, look at this, my drawings. And and, um, and I was perplexed because I couldn't find any of my colorful, awesome drawings. It was just all these black and white sketches and they weren't that great and all that. And then at one point I'm flipping through and I see a man and a woman. They're naked, but they're laying down flat on their backs in the picture and their private parts are scribbled over like like somebody was mad and they just scribbled over them and uh and i'm still trying and i'm fumbling and i the folder like flipped out of my hand and it went all the pictures and everything that i had sketches i had just went flying and i was desperately trying to pick them up and like organize them and grab in the folder and right then i woke up and i even remembered going lord what was that about like uh, what did that mean? And um, so I've had that question. I even like, <laughs> I tried to even go, <laughs> this is funny. So I got up, went use the restroom, came back and I was like, Lord, I'm going to go back to sleep and hopefully you show me what that meant. And that didn't happen. <laughs> but I had another crazy dream after that. I remember I was in, 
I, I won't even go into this one, but I, I was in a, a lot. I was in a van, and I'm with these people, and it was like an ice age, and we're driving around trying to survive. And now I think that maybe that was like the left behind, you know? And it was like everything was frozen, and it was like a wasteland, and it was a frozen wasteland. But anyway, so I know God said he's going to come and destroy everything with fire, so maybe that was just like me trying to have a dream. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> The, the point is, is that I'll go ahead and get into what happened and how I re realized what I think I know what that mean, dream means. And I urgently want everybody to know that I really believe that that folder was my sins and I was trying to hold on to them and I barely made the rapture. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. And um, it was like, because I was desperately trying to grasp onto those and um, I've shared, you know, personally being transparent with the body of Christ that that's been like one of the things that I've struggled with is lust addiction and um, um, watching things that I shouldn't be and then like using justification that oh Lord I'm a um, single Christian and you know I haven't been in a relationship in years and um, just trying to justify it you know and um, Lately, I have been feeling from the Lord, and maybe everybody, that's why I need to ask everybody to think about this, is, have you felt like the Lord's been asking you to cut things out of your life? Because uh, one of the things that stands out to me in Revelation, it says that the 144,000 that are caught up, or that the elect with God that come back or go with Him whenever He comes back, they're as virgins. And... Um, Obviously, there's not going to be that, I think, there's not going to be that many virgins, but because the Lord doesn't see our sin anymore, if we repent and, you know, turn away from those things, to Jesus, we are virgins. So I believe that, not that we have to earn our way into to the kingdom of heaven, we don't have to, you know, we're saved by grace, you know, but he does say that um, there's a part in scripture that talks about, you know, that we're basically going to have, I'll paraphrase, we're going to have two piles of things, and one of the piles is going to be gems and, and gold and everything, and those are the works that we did, and then on the right side, is you know, the works that we didn't do that were of the Lord, they're as chaff, you know, it's like hay and, uh, you know, real flimsy pieces of wood and things like that that would burn up in the fire, and it says that you know, those things will be tested and what's left behind is our work. And if the chaff gets burned up, we'll be saved. But as through fire, it says in the word. So, you know, it also says that we, we gain crowns by our, our works and things like that. And I'm not saying that, I mean, if the motive of your heart is to have a bigger crown than everybody else in heaven, that's not going to be it. But if you're working for the Lord because you love him and you want to save souls by, you know, showing people the good news and the gospel and standing in the gap and persevering and things like that, that's how you receive your, your crowns. And we're going to have responsibilities in, in heaven and we're going to, um, be rulers over things. It says that even if during the thousand year reign, the millennial kingdom, you know, uh, we're going to be appointed over things and, I'm not sure what that looks like, but I'd like to imagine that, you know, we're going to be helping others. Uh, maybe during a thousand year reign, um, uh, the, we'll be, you know, have ever, we'll be everlasting life and there'll still be people born. You know, the ones that survived the rapture and everything, maybe they're in the flesh, they'll still be able to have children and we'll be kings and dominions over them and help them. And so who knows, you know, I'm. <laughs> This is not something that's like a, um, you know, this is my interpretation. I don't, I don't know these things for sure. But the main point of it is, let me get back on track, is that don't hold on to your sins. Um, I'm sure that Manila folder now was my sins, and I was de desperately trying to grasp onto them. And uh, I thought they were, you know, works at first and when I first saw it and I couldn't find any of my good works my colorful stuff but um, the symbolism of you know I believe now that God was scratching out that that stuff like cut this out you know cut this out of your life because 
he had scribbled out the, the dirty stuff. And he wants to do the same thing in your life. and and But we have to make that choice and repent and turn away from it. But I believe the Lord's coming back soon, y'all. <laughs> I mean, for me to see the the, the eclipse and everything, and uh, I believe I saw that Devil's Comet that they said is going to be at the same time as the solar eclipse. Um, and just so many things. Um, I want y'all to just think about this. You know, how mankind can distort and change things and try and make things look like their signs. And we are warned that there will be false prophets that will do things like that. But false prophets and all that can't alter the stars. They can't alter the sun and the moon. And uh, those are the signs from the Lord. It even says that God placed those things to be signs to us. And, um, yeah. <laughs> the fact that the blood moon, and it even says in Revelation that, you know, the blood, the sun will go dark and the moon will turn to blood. That's what I saw. But I saw multiple moons and and just like in different phases. It was almost like that, I don't even know what that art style is, but it's like cut out of like shapes and then they use them to like go with like maybe they have a little stick on the picture and it goes across like that and somebody's doing it from behind. But it's like cut out pieces of uh, construction paper. That's what it looked like, kind of, but extremely colorful and extremely well done it wasn't like a uh an artist that you know it was a very talented artist that had cut that stuff out but it was literally the panoramic view of the sky and it just went slow not slowly extremely fast from that beautiful beach scene that i had seen to pitch black darkness and then all the the sky opening up and the throne room of god and yeah and then being caught up on a balloon me going up slow i think that represented the fact that you know, even though it's supposed to happen in the twinkling of an eye, there's going to be those that are, you know, just on the cusp and nobody wants to be there. Cut it out right now. Cut it out of your life. Repent. Turn back to Jesus. Live for Him. And just know that He's coming back soon. Persevere. I know things are tough right now. But He loves you and He'll give you the strength. Remember that He'll never put you through more than you can bear and He'll always give you a way out. I mean, I'm not telling you to test God, but I am telling you to think about the times that, you know, maybe an impure thought pops into your head or something happens or you're about to sin and you know you're about to, but you're fighting it. Watch what happens. God will stop something from happening. It'll almost frustrate you. You'll be like, dang, I'm just about to do this. And then he'll, but listen to that. Listen to that. He'll show you. You might be about to watch something and then something pop up on your phone like a scripture if you got the Bible app on there or uh, maybe your favorite Christian YouTuber just releases a new video and you see it. I'm saying this from personal experience um, and I know that he does that to his, I'm not unique. He does it to everybody because he loves us all. But I just want to say thank you y'all and um, praise Jesus. I'm so excited. Um, and let's stand in the gap to help each other. Pray for each other to, that we can resist sin and that we can quench the fiery darts of the enemy with the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the sandal shed in the gospel of peace, the sword which is the word, and the shield which quenches the fiery darts. Let's do that. We have the holy armor of God. I used to think about it, you know, I'll say this real quick and then I'll get off. Think about in medieval times that um, about the the young squire that had to learn how to don the armor, and he was all clumsy and trying to put on stuff, and might have been too big for him, and he's fumbling and trying to tie the the leather strings that hold on to the stuff, and he comes out looking all crazy, and his shields, oh, where's your helmet? Oh, dang it, I left it in the tent. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a practice thing; we have to do it every day. And you even had somebody that would help you. I said a squire, but if you were a young knight, you had a squire that would come and help you don your armor. The Holy Spirit is our helper. And if you literally pay attention to that and you put on your holy armor every day, you get better and better at it. So make sure you make a conscious effort to do that. Paul said we have to die to ourselves daily. And that's how we have to wake up. We have to wake up, die to ourselves daily, 
and pray that the Lord give us uh, strength to walk throughout the day and to resist temptation and to praise Him for what we have and to be a light unto others so that they can see and know the truth because the truth will set them free as well as you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I love y'all. Let me begin by saying, brother, wow, that was so powerful. Everything that you had seen in your experience definitely reminds me of what is happening today on April 8th, the solar eclipse, you know, mentioning that all of a sudden everything went completely dark and you started seeing things happen in the sky. And we know, as we've read in the Bible, that there would be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. So it's already been foretold in the Bible that these things would all happen. And everything is happening so quickly. But brothers and sisters, be of good encouragement. I know that this is all happening so quickly, but stay firm in the word of God and stay encouraged because the Lord is coming so very soon. And he also had seen some incredible things and one in particular being the throne of God. Praise God. That is so beautiful. You got to see that appear in the sky. And then you had also mentioned the banquet. And that reminds me, of course, of the wedding supper of the lamb, because we know that we are raptured up. That is a major event that we have to look forward to. And we will be amongst all of the brethren. And of course, most importantly, the Lord. He will be the head of the table, and I truly am looking forward to that moment as well. And I know you had mentioned, you know, quite a few other things about your experience. And I do also had noticed, which really caught my eye, as you had mentioned about um, that rod, all of a sudden I heard in the background that big thunder that just was rocking back there. So it went really well with what you were saying, because, you know, the Lord has so much power. He can do anything he wants. And the Lord is having all these things happen for a reason. There's a reason why the Lord had everything line up to where we are right now. There is a reason why uh, the rapture hadn't happened a uh, hundred years ago or 200 years ago or even more because we wouldn't have been alive. We wouldn't have been saved at that time. So everything has aligned so that all of us would have the wonderful opportunity of salvation. And today is the day of salvation. And our brother said it very well. We are all sinners in need of a savior. But once we have the Holy Spirit within us, he will guide us. The Holy Spirit will guide us to walk forward and to move past. Um, the things that we had once done are not exciting anymore. What's more exciting is looking up to what the Lord has planned for us because he told us not to conform of this world, to be, be focused on what is in heaven. Now, when you had mentioned that you had seen that envelope and you had seen all of those pictures that were in that envelope come out and you were looking at them and they were not colorful, they were black and white. And I know you had mentioned seeing two people um, that had scribbles over their their areas of their body. I do believe that this is, uh, and this is my interpretation, this is a sign that when there was scratch marks all over that, that our past has been washed because the Lord died on the cross for our sins. So those things that we had once done in our past and those things that had been revealed to you in that manila envelope, they are done. That was from the past. And now you are walking forward. You have the Lord within you. And you said it so well that once you start, you know, feeling guilty, you had said of wanting to do things that you shouldn't be doing. You have that guilt in you and you don't want to do it. And you said too, sometimes things will intervene. A Bible app scripture may come up as our brother said, or something may intervene because the Lord doesn't want us to do those things. He wants us to stay focused on him because he is coming soon. He's coming for those who are looking up to him who believe in him, who have put their faith and trust in him. Because once we come to Christ, we are a new creature in Christ. Our past has been washed. We believe in our heart and have confessed with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we are saved. So I truly want to thank you so much, Brother Matthew, for sharing this powerful experience with the channel, as well as the encouragement for all of us, the brethren. 
So his channel information will be in the description box. So please head over there and subscribe. Please type in the comments box. I'm ready to see the Lord. Please type, I am ready to see the Lord because I know that I am. And I'm sure many of you are as well. So until next time, brothers and sisters, may God bless you all and have a very blessed week.